Hey, JD, how's it going? Hey, can you see me? Yeah, I can hear and see you. I'm waiting for Rowan to jump on. Okay, cool. Let me see if I invited her correctly. Let me try to get my thing set up so that we can see my screen. Perfect. Let's see if this works. Can you see like, can you see this right here? Can you see my paper? Yeah, I can see well, thanks. Great, great, great. Is it like all in frame? I think it is, right? Yeah, it looks really good. Awesome. So you want me to start or are we waiting for Rowan to join or is she coming in? On and then she hopped off. So I'll give her another minute and then we can start. Okay. Let's see. I'm sure she'll be on, so. Something, yeah. But I today, so uh, I can just kind of give like a little outline of what I'm gonna be doing here. I'm gonna be drawing a tree and if anyone wants to join in with me, I got simple ballpoint pen. So if you guys have a ballpoint pen, that's all you're going to need. And I have just a little sheet of paper here. This is in my sketchbook, but this is just a little five by seven paper or six by nine paper. Uh, but any kind of paper is going to work. This one has a little bit of texture on it. But if you guys have printer paper or a little scrap paper, anything will be good for this. So okay. sorry about that. I kept having technical difficulties. <laughs> all good. Hello, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Good, okay, so I'm so glad we're all here. Um, I heard you were telling us about what we needed, which is good, something super simple, paper, pen. Paper, um, pen, yeah, ho hopefully the lighting is good. I got my, um, I got my thingy, I got my light right on here, so hopefully it looks good. Yeah, it looks pretty clear. Awesome. Um, I just wanted to introduce everybody and let them all know, uh, first of all, thank you all for being here. Um, this is our IG live studio session with our featured artist, JD, uh, super talented guy from New York. Very just, I mean, anything he does, you'll just, you'll see your, for yourself. Oh, um, <laughs> you're too kind. <laughs> um, and thank so you. we're tonight, we're talking about perfectionism and um, sketching and trees and things like that. So. I think it'll be a really good conversation, but I just wanted to kind of ask everyone to think of one word. Um, and this can relate to how you might feel when you're immersed in nature. So imagine yourself surrounded by trees in a forest, whatever it is, um, a botanical garden. What is this one word? And maybe tonight we can find a way to manifest it through our sketches. I like um, that. Yeah. So Do you I have a word in mind? I do. My word is refreshed. I like that. I like that. Yeah. What about you guys? JD. Uh, <laughs> serene. Like Probably like serene, serenity, something like that. That's yes. the vibes I always get from being outside or something. Well, most of the time. It's like a nice reset or like a refresh, like you were saying, exactly. from the city life into, into nature. So like serenity, I, I'd say is a good word. Yeah, I like that. What about you, Nadine? It's your turn now. Resilient. I don't know why, but it... I like that one too. I think nature is definitely resilient. Um, and if anyone has a word they like to, to throw in, definitely do so in the comments. Um, and with that, we'll let JD do his thing. Sure. So uh, for those of you who are just joined, I'm doing a tree drawing here. I have just a little piece of paper and I got a um, ballpoint pen. This is a standard ballpoint pen. So if you guys have that out, I'm going to kind of go over just before we start, uh, just some like simple strokes to kind of to master in the half an hour that we have. These are very simple stuff that we can do. And it's just dif um, differentiating different kinds of pressure. So, if, so say you were going to write your name on a piece of paper, right? So let me just write my name. J O H N. I would call that kind of pressure like a medium pressure. So that's something that would form something like this, right? So it's not too dark, it's not too light. It's just like the same pressure you would do to write your name. Now, if you were to be like really mad, so here's your here's your angry face, right? Here's your little angry face. So if you're angry and you want to really carve up the paper, 
this is going to be the pressure that you would do for that. So you can make all little mad little zigzags. And that would be for like your darkest value. So that's like your shadow colors and stuff, right? So we got value one, we got value two. And now let's do like one more value, which would be if you were to like, here's like a little cat. So if you want to pet like a little kitty, there's like a little cat. So if you were to like pet a, like a small cat, you want to be very gentle. So this would be your strokes for that. So very, very, very gentle, barely touching the paper, just letting the tip of the pen do all the work. And that would be for your lightest values. So let's think of tonight as like one, two, and three. Um, actually, I should probably do like one would be like the angry one. Two would be how you write your name. And then a three would be how you would pet a cat. Okay. So with that said, I think we've all kind of seen how trees look. And the beauty about trees is that they are so imperfect. And what I kind of want to talk about today is perfectionism, which as an artist and as a human and as someone who is very, very, very much a perfectionist in my everyday life and everything that I do, um, drawing and sketching can be uh, fairly challenging sometimes because of the pressures that come with it. Um, being someone who uh, is almost like expected to always have an amazing piece of art or do something really, really great with art. Um, I feel like I don't have a lot of wiggle room to be like, here's my drawing and it's not that good, you know? So like everything I feel like I do now has to be like elite, otherwise it's not good enough. And that's not true, you know? And I did a sketch class a couple weeks ago with this artist named Dina Brodsky. And if you want to check her out, she's unbelievable. It's at Dina Brodsky. And uh, she does a lot of tree drawings and sketches in her sketchbooks. And um, we went there and had a great time. But the, 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 the takeaway from it was that she did one minute sketches uh, and then like two minute sketches and then five minute sketches and then like 15 minute sketches. And the beauty of that was like the one minute sketches, you, you're not allowed to get really technical with it. You just you just free ball it. You just have fun with it. And you just kind of let the paper take you where it's going to go. And I think that's like a really good starting point for us right now is just to like, let's get like a one minute sketch down. So if we can set a timer for one minute yeah. and I want we can draw a tree in approximately one minute. Okay, so okay. Rowan, do you have a timer or anything? <laughs> yeah, I have someone on it. Okay, so. so if you can get someone on a timer for one yeah. minute, we're gonna do uh, a very basic tree shape in one minute. So tell me when you're ready. All right, we'll start in five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, so let's <laughs> do a very simple tree drawing. And this is gonna be something, I don't want anyone to really think too much about it. We're not gonna think about detail. We're just gonna think about shapes. We're gonna think about the way tree branches move. We've all seen like a zillion trees in our life. So just kind of go off of that. So right now I'm doing somewhere in between writing my name and petting a cat. It's not too, um, not too hard, not too soft with the lines, just kind of right in the middle. Do you think going softer with the lines helps you move quicker through the page? It helps you move quicker. I like to maybe sort of start a little heavier and then flick. So I'll like put a little bit more pressure in certain areas. But my first rendering, I'm going very, very softly. So now how many seconds do we have left? Eight. Eight seconds. Yeah. Okay. So now let's just put like a little shading Three, in there. Two, one, pens down. Great. So here's, here's <laughs> wow, your one minute geez. tree right here. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> that looks amazing. <laughs> There's your one minute tree. So let's all reflect on how that went. Um, Rowan, do you want to show yours? Did you do uh, it? It's pretty stressful. I'm not going to lie. Pretty stress. Okay. <laughs> it looks good. It looks excellent. Uh, oh, that's, that's, a great, that's a great little one. That's a great little one minute tree. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to see if I have other scrap paper. I don't want to use my good paper for the one minute. One sec. Yeah. yeah. Same. So, let's see. Let's see yours. Oh. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna use this. This is gonna be for ah, we're gonna do that. we're gonna do a two minute. And in between now and the two minute, what I want to do is kind of just coach you guys through uh, certain forms of trees. Okay. So the one minute was just to kind of get us loose. 
uh, in our drawing. And now let's kind of go into how does a tree form, right? So a tree is going to have, um, let me just use this scrap right here. So a tree is going to have a few basic shapes. Think of a tree as like a really refined letter Y, okay? So we have a letter Y. We can all do a Y. We've all learned how to write, hopefully. Um, so we have a letter Y. Um, and now we can kind of build off of that. So let's say that that's a skeleton. So now we can kind of do a little trunk. <clears throat> and you notice how it kind of tapers up. It's going to be the thickest at the bottom. And it's going to get a little skinnier. And now we're going to do some branches. And that's going to be the inverse of the trunk. So where the trunk is fatter on the bottom and skinnier by the, the junction point of the Y, our branches are going to go opposite. So we're going to go fatter here and then skinnier here. So fatter at the base and skinnier at the top. And then we think of that as from that, we want to build upon different branches. So the most important thing I always say in drawing trees is you don't want any right angles, OK? So we never see trees that have perfect L shapes. So that's the only thing that we really want to avoid when doing branches. So in other words, you wouldn't want to do a branch like that, OK? That's not going to look too realistic for a tree. All tree branches are going to be versions of some squiggly lines. So think of like squiggly Y shapes, right? And tree branches, the beauty of them is they're never perfect, but they are rarely going to start from the same spot. So you're never going to really see a tree branch. For example, if we did a branch right here, we're never going to see one come out from here and then one come out from the same spot on the other side. I see a lot of people, they do trees and they just kind of look like this. And that never really looks too realistic for trees. So you never want to have like perfect symmetry. So the less you think about it, the better. So sometimes those one minute drawings are actually the best part. So when you do a tree branch, you might have one here. You might have one here. You might have one coming out from here or there or there. So you never want to be predictable with it, right? You want to have them coming out from all angles, all sides just no right angles and nothing coming out from the same junction point like that. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. Great. So, and that's kind of the beauty of trees is if you have a shaky hand, the squigglier the lines, the better. You can kind of make like little haunted looking branches and stuff like that. So let's do another tree in two minutes. So okay. let's set a two minute timer. All right, is everyone ready? Nadine, where'd you go? I need, okay, I got it. Okay. All right, in five, four, three, two, one, go. So you see how this is kind of like the letter Y, but it's a more tree-like version of it. I'm just letting my hand be very natural, not thinking too much. And that's kind of the thing with perfectionism is um, you can get kind of crippled by wanting to do something absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. And then you don't do it at all. And it's mm -hmm. probably my biggest flaw or challenge that I have in life is wanting to do everything perfectly. And then sometimes not even really doing it at all because I'm afraid. So... And I think it's really helpful to have stuff like this where we're showing each other what we're making because I know for me and a lot of artists, like we create in private and so no one sees our garbage. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it kind of lets us just be okay with sharing that. I agree. I, I really think, I think it's important to a lot of the stuff, you know, Instagram, TikTok, it's just like a very filtered view of the world and we don't often post stuff that we don't like totally curate mm -hmm. for the app so i think sometimes it's nice to kind of see that like not every drawing has to be perfect and putting time limits on it kind of gives you an excuse to like have something that's not you know 100 percent, and that's yeah. okay even if this was a two hour long drawing and it didn't come out good you can still learn some from it we have about 15 seconds 
So with the two minute drawing, the, the one minute drawing, I was able to kind of get um, just the basic skeleton in. With the two minute, I'm able to kind of get a little bit of shadow, which I'm going to explain in a Three, little bit. Three, two, one. All right. Great. So here's the two minute tree. Oh my right gosh, here. that's amazing. And for shading. The two minute tree, <laughs> the two minute tree is utilizing um, basically like two of the three. So this is kind of our darkest values here and this is our lightest value. So I kind of got two, maybe three shades in there, but not too much. Um, the beauty of this is that um, I kind of want to discuss uh, shadows and lights, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. kind of help a lot in um, drawings. So if you think of the light source in this photo, the light source would be from up here because mm -hmm. all the dark branches are on the right side or the underside of each branch and all the light sections are on the left side. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like a good way to kind of understand how nature works is understanding the relationship between how light refracts or reflects off of an object. So you wouldn't have a shadow here, for example, and here, for example, mm -hmm. because then you would have two light sources. And in nature, that usually doesn't happen unless you're really, really technical and you have like, you know, reflecting water maybe will reflect off of that. But for the most part, you want to kind of keep that congruent with some darks on one side and lights on the other. So this will be our two minute long sketch. Nadine, can we see yours? Um, JD's two minutes would take me 30 years to <laughs> <laughs> That looks so good. Let me that see. Looks it looks good. good. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> Ruan, did you show yours? Um, so I didn't get any shading in. But okay. If you have fun with the branches, I think that's my favorite part is just getting messy and gothic -y and get get crazy with it. Yeah. Weird. All, uh... So let's so let's do um how much time do we have by the way? We have until 9:30. 9:30. Okay, great. Oh. So let's do so we have it's like 9:15ish sort of 9:17. So we have like 15 minutes left. So let's do like one uh, 15 minute drawing and we'll kind of take this one a little slower and we'll kind of um, maybe discuss a little bit more about perfectionism or some things as we do, as we draw along, okay? Yes, and is everyone, does anyone have a particular tree they're drawing? I think I'm gonna do a cherry blossom. What about you guys? It's a great idea, yeah, cherry blossom. I'm doing one that they actually cut down next to my apartment mm -hmm. like yesterday Eight. for like no reason that kind of got me a little annoyed uh, they have a tendency where i live to just like chop trees down randomly mm -hmm. so um this one they they said the tree was dying even though it had full leaves on and stuff so i'm gonna do that one i took a picture of it so that's I'm a nice try. way to come yeah right i'm gonna try to do that one okay. all right so all right. Countdown? You want to do like a little 15 minute countdown? Right? Yeah, 15 minutes. All 15? right. Yeah. So five, right. four, three, two, one. Let's go. Great. So, does anyone have any questions or anything you guys want to ask or anything of that sort? Yeah. And if anyone has any questions or comments, also put it in the chat. Um, I want to know a little bit about your sketching class, like how that's going. How do you feel when you're going in? Like, do you feel like you're already a pro or is it something completely brand new to you? Um, that is actually a great question. Um, I just had a first class the other day on sketching and I have never actually kept a sketchbook in my life. I've always been intimidated by, by the idea of having a sketchbook. So this is a good way for me to kind of broaden my comfort zone with that. Um, it's taught by that woman, Dina Brodsky. So mm -hmm. if I was to take any class on sketching, it would be with her because she is, I think, the best in the world at keeping a sketchbook. Um, check her out at Dina, B-R-O-D-S-K-Y, Brodsky. Um, she's unbelievable and such a sweet, sweet person. But the theme, which interesting enough, the theme of that first class was perfectionism and it seemed like a common trait with every artist there was 15 of us in the class was the main fear and the main hesitation 
towards keeping a sketchbook or drawing more consistently was perfectionism and the fear of messing up or the fear of not being good enough or the fear mm -hmm. of whatever I do is not as good as what I see online and things like that. And Dina showed us some of her sketchbooks um, that she never really shows anyone else. And these are stuff that she doesn't post online. And this is stuff from when she was just kind of learning how to draw. And it was amazing her progress. And she said, it took me a whole year to fill this sketchbook. And I'm not really happy with any of these drawings, mm -hmm. but each one was important in me developing myself as an artist to where I am now. Mm -hmm. And that was when she was kind of first in art school, keeping a sketchbook. And her drawings, I mean, they were okay, but they were nothing to what she can do now. Mm -hmm. And I think that was kind of like a big lesson of, you see all these Instagram artists and all these people and you're like, oh my God, their stuff is so good. How did they get that good? Well, that's the, how did they get that good right yeah. in there? That is like the, the meat and potatoes of how someone gets good at something is constant repetition and uh, sort of being humbled because I tend to think of myself as a pretty good artist in some ways, but in others, I'm pretty terrible and consistency I'm really, really bad in. And I think if I got a couple more reps in to where I wasn't really afraid of doing it, I could grow so much more. And that's kind of, at least from that first lesson, what I really got from it, that it's okay not to be okay. That's awesome. I love that. I, I, I think you're absolutely right when it comes to like, a sketchbook is kind of like a diary. Yeah. So years later, days later, when you look back at it and you're like, okay, this is embarrassing or why was I doing this? But I think just accepting that and saying like, it's okay, this is a step in the right direction. Exactly. So, so far, um, all I've done here, these are like very light strokes. I'm like barely touching my paper and it might be hard for everyone to kind of see, but I've like barely touched anything so far. Uh, I have like the basic outline of the tree so now I'm going to start um, establishing a little bit more contrast. So I'm just doing very, very, very faint lines going up the tree trunk. And a tree like this, I mean, if I was to like go in on it, would take hours and hours and hours. Mm -hmm. So I think she was saying that her tree drawings take like 80 hours to do. Wow. 80, yeah. And they're just these small little 8 by 10 drawings and they're 80 hours. Wow. So if you can kind of marvel, I just want to kind of, there's this is one that she did that I saved with ballpoint pen. Oh so this was, this was done with pen and it's really, really amazing. And if mm -hmm. you zoom in and just see kind of the detail, it's just all values of shading it's all it is it's just mm -hmm. all shades and it's done over 80 hours and i think that's like an important kind of lesson to learn mm -hmm. is that when you see these pieces of art that look unbelievable like these weren't created in an afternoon or they weren't created in a night they're created over many many days many sometimes many many weeks of hard labor and intense creativity and I think kind of the cool thing, and this is kind of what she touched on a little bit, is with ballpoint pens, like there's no eraser. So mm -hmm. with pencil, she's like, she said, you can do a sketchbook in pencil, but it's kind of like a crutch because you'll find yourself revising things and editing mm -hmm. and erasing. And she said, with ballpoint pen, you don't have that luxury. So you're kind of stuck with whatever line you make. So you have to be a little bit more deliberate and a little bit more um, forgiving yeah and mistakes aren't necessarily mistakes in this so you can you can make a mistake and just cover it up with a darker line because we're we're layering we're layering values here so oh that's awesome do you uh -huh. what do you feel like is the most complicated thing for you to sketch like portraits or nature or i would say nature is the easiest because um and it's the most fun because it's the less um it's the least, I don't want to say technical because that's not the right word, but it's the most forgiving and you don't have to think as hard. Like with portraits, if you like make an eye really wonky looking, it's going to look weird, right? But if you make a branch 
strange or out of place. Like, no one's going to know that. Like, hey, that branch isn't supposed to go there. So yeah. I like doing nature. And portraits are the most intimidating for me to sketch. Yeah. I don't really, I don't particularly like portraits, even though a lot of my work is portraits. I don't really like doing them too much. And do you like sketching more digitally or with your hand, like with pen and paper? What do you find? Um, there's something about the tactile nature of paper, which is just really, really nice. Um, especially like good quality paper. Mm -hmm. um, I like digital, but um, I find that the brushes in digital art kind of yield you to get lazy sometimes because you'll have a brush that does fur for you. Or like if you see like my <laughs> pet portraits and like my, my dog drawings that like look pretty realistic, like almost like hyper realistic. I have like brushes for everything. I have brushes for tiny fur, brushes for long fur, brushes for blending fur, brushes for mm -hmm. eyes, brushes for the area around the eye. Like I ha everything comes with a brush. And that's why you can get, and you can zoom in. You can't zoom in on paper. So you can yeah. zoom in and do like the pupil super perfect and zoom out. And it's like a perfect circle, you know, or perfectly detailed within, you know, a small little area. So I find digital art as like almost like a medium in and of itself, but there's nothing like the feeling of the tactile feedback on paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think maybe digital could be really great for like commission work, but sketching paper yeah. is like more so for, you know, for your artistic soul. Yeah. Like I, I do a lot of my mock-ups and a lot of graphic design stuff digitally, but because mm -hmm. um, it would take forever if I was to like, say I was doing a mural and I have to s submit like a sketch for it. Like doing a sketch on paper is just so annoying compared to like stitching pictures together and doing some drawings over them or something like that and submitting that. It's just a little easier. Yeah, that makes sense. Nadine, how are you feeling over there? Because this is kind of new for you. Usually you're painting with us, but you're not sketching with us. So how does this feel? Um, I think with JD's instruction at the beginning, it's really helped. Like, yeah. the, and then avoid this and then the levels of shading. I feel like sketching is a little easier than using a paintbrush for some reason. Mm. Um, but that could be the instruction that I got. So thanks. Of course. And I think the cool thing about sketching, especially with a pen, you know, it's accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we're all familiar with. You know, we've used pens through grade school, through our whole life, you know, taking tests, writing names, everything. We've always kind of, even if you're not an artist or don't really like art, I'm sure you've doodled in a notebook before with your pen. So it's a tool that we're all familiar with. Not everyone is familiar with the paintbrush in that kind of way. So I kind of like... I kind of like using pens. I didn't think I would like it that much, but um, I, I, I actually really do. Rowan, have you found, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your own journey as an artist? Uh, you should check her, guys, check her page out too. She does some really awesome okay. stuff. Yeah. Um, have you found yourself kind of turning to a sketchbook at all? Or are you kind of like me and you, have you ever kept a sketchbook or? I definitely have sketchbooks, um, but I rarely will just sketch in them. It's usually like flushing out ideas or one time my sister was getting like her tonsils or something out. And so I brought a sketchbook for that. <laughs> but it's even then, like I usually bring watercolor brushes with me and a watercolor palette, like a travel size one. So I'm hardly ever just using a pen or pencil. And if I do, I'm reaching for charcoal pencils. Oh, I think cool. I just I like the texture and the messiness and so being very clean and technical with you know a pen or a pencil is very different for me mm. yeah charcoal is really fun but I tend to avoid the messiness I don't like the messiness as much so it's interesting how different mediums fare differently with different people because with me, I'm like, oh, charcoal. I'm like, oh, it's going to just get like glitter. For example, glitter just gets <laughs> yeah. all over the place. I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be okay with, yeah, exactly. You have to be okay that this is going to get messy yeah. if you're going for that. And if you're not, it's not for everyone. 
So now I have all kind of my lights in. I have some medium values. So now I'm going in with the darks. And I always find the darks make everything pop. So until you get your dark values in, your drawing is going to look very flat. But then once you get your dark values in, the drawing kind of takes over into a new form. So now you kind of get, now I can do like the cracks in the tree trunk and like in the branches. And I think trees are the best thing to do with pen because you can really get in with those cracks and do like trunk, the tree trunk all kind of, you know, broken and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like anything, like if you were to cook a meal, you wouldn't add everything all at once, right? You, you layer ingredients, you'll saute the onions first and then add something else. And kind of like drawing, like you don't want to do everything all at once. You do one thing and then you move to another and it helps like your brain, like, especially if you're doing a hard drawing or really technical drawing helps you like stay sane during the process of it. Because otherwise, there's some times where you're doing your drawing and you're like, this looks horrible, but you're like, you've done it a thousand times. So you know that it's going to look good in the end and just to kind of stick on course. I think that's the hardest part is like having patience with yourself and like, yep. at least for people who aren't patient like me. I am impatient as hell. <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm halfway through, I'm like, this is garbage. I can't. But... Mm -hmm. Easy for me to say. Yeah. Yeah. Patient, guys. And meanwhile, like, <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> So how do you feel now about having, because I'm guessing you have a sketchbook now. I mean, this is my sketch. This is actually my first drawing in the sketchbook. So <laughs> oh, um, wow, nice. <laughs> this is the first one. So yeah, so far so good. feels good. You know, uh, I'm going to be doing, she's going to be giving us prompts every week to do. So mm -hmm. I don't know what this week's prompt is, but I'm going to, I guess, have to break this sketchbook out more often. Mm -hmm. So, but it's fun. Like I, I took, I took uh, another sketchbook on the train with me the other day and I was just kind of, just kind of doodling some trees, you know, while I was riding on the train and it helps pass the time rather than staring yeah. at my phone all day. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's so good. And the other thing too, you mentioned something about Instagram and stuff. I think it's really hard too when we see five second videos of like, you know, this incredible piece of art that's being made when really it took, like you said, hours and hours. Yep. But, you know, it's just smushed into a few seconds. Smushed, exactly. The, our whole process smushed into a five second clip. It's mm -hmm. kind of the way social media has become. Mm -hmm. But I had a really good, the, the one time I I'd sketched and it hadn't been so long since I'd done, I went to a sketch class with my girlfriend, Gabby, and we went mm -hmm. to this amazing uh, sketching thing in, I think it was Central Park, and we did tree drawings. Nice. And it was like, just like a really fun afternoon. And I hadn't sketched in a really long time at that point. And it was like very informal. It's just a bunch of artists from the art student, art students league in Manhattan, kind of getting together and just like, oh, we're just going to sketch some trees together sort of thing. So uh, it was really fun, like just letting loose and saying like, okay, well, I haven't done this in a while and that's okay. Yeah. And let's find a tree that we like. And Gabby and I both picked the same tree and we did drawings of the tree and both of ours were from slightly different vantage points. I kind of focused more on like the form of the whole thing and she got kind of a little bit more up close, like more zoomed in with hers. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of cool, like our two drawings uh you know side by side they came out really cool is she an artist or no no but she she does she does pretty good and you know mm -hmm. we have fun with it and i think yeah. that's the most important thing is like everyone's an artist in some kind of way and like you don't have to be like technically good or like a pro to like enjoy it right and i yes. think that's kind of like the takeaway of 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 this hopefully you guys can kind of find like you know just enjoying putting some ink on paper and like, don't even worry about the outcome. Like whatever this is, it is. Yeah, I'm definitely getting more comfortable with that. How are you doing, Nadine? Ah, uh, pretty good, pretty good. I think mm -hmm. this is one of my best drawings in about 15 years, so. That's amazing. Nice. <laughs> But you guys can see when we're done. How much time do we have left? I think we're like, <laughs> I think we're at time now, but. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. We're <laughs> at 15. <laughs> okay. So I guess we're done. So this is what I came up with in my 15 minutes. Wow. That's really beautiful. 
yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. There's some areas like, you know, I would spend a little bit more time going a little slower in certain areas, but I think for like 15 minutes, it's, it's pretty good. It, it looks cool. Looks great. Thanks. So would you describe, you're saying you used your soft and medium and hard, or did you just layer them? I, I did them all sort of, but like, for example, like with a soft technique, if you do like soft and then you do soft on top of that and you do mm -hmm. soft on top of that and you do soft on top of that and you just keep going, you get like, uh, you can see like pretty nice gradiency in different mm -hmm. areas. And it's great for like tree branches r rather than just doing like one pressure the whole way. So it's better to like layer something than to just mm -hmm. like, two or one just like you could you can build upon it with different layers yeah. of softness so this is mostly like doing very soft areas in one section for a lot of time to make it dark yeah that's what rather than like i'm scraping at it but at the very yeah. end i'm gonna scrape so like at the very end if i want want to really like accentuate this line now i'm actually like i'm pressing you can i'm like carving into the paper and that gets it even darker so Hopefully that was good. Hopefully you guys had some fun with that. Yeah, I think we had fun and we learned, which is always a bonus. All right. Hey, oh my gosh. Let me see so everyone. You, do you feel like you used different uh, strokes? Yeah, I think I did one, two, and three. That was really nice to learn. So thank you, JD. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what about you? I think I'm doing a lot more of the two and three. I think I need to get a little softer. <laughs> oh, that's oh, great. I love the form of those tree branches, though. That looks amazing. Thanks. I mean, it's, it's like what you said about trees being messy and loose and kind of like not being perfect. That's what I love most about making trees. Um, yeah, is, that with, is that red pen that you have? Yeah, this is like a magenta. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Really, really um, I didn't have a black one, so I was like, we're just going to go with red. You could um, do red and then do some accents with black in it, you know? Yeah, yeah, with charcoal. Yeah. <laughs> or charcoal. This is where you get creative. This is where the yeah. artist really comes in. This is where you can kind of have some you, fun with it. You can't restrict me to one thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'd love if everyone could hold up their pieces and we could take a quick picture. Okay. Sure. Let can take a screenshot. Let me see who's Here. on. Usually we have a screenshot person. <laughs> All right, I'll be the screenshot. Per oh, I can't. <laughs> Can Mateo do it? Yeah. Are you, Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, ready. Okay, one. Well, move yours over. This way. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> Hold, on. Hold on. I'm I'm way behind. I don't get it. Okay. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Oh, you got, got it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> got it? Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, J.D. This was great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for awesome. having me. I actually, like, enjoy just sitting down and doing it, which is different for me. So. Yeah, it got me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done any – I wouldn't have drawn. So yeah. it's kind of good to, like – I'm like, all right, now now I kind of have some creative flow going. I kind of feel exactly. like, all right, no, let me let me do some more stuff now. So. Exactly. You know, I'm like, I'm going to finish this tonight. Yeah. But I, I think a, a good exercise um, – you know, if anyone kind of wants to pick up a habit, you know, for mm -hmm. sketchbooks, start with just a couple one minute drawings, give yourself like two or three prompts, like a tree, uh, a log cabin and a, um, a cityscape and do them, do each one for like a minute and see what comes out of it. And maybe like every day, give yourself a new prompt and just know that like, for that day, I'm only going to do a one minute sketch. Mm -hmm. And maybe for the whole week, you just do seven one minute sketches. And then the next week you do seven two minute sketches. And then the next week you do seven 15 minute sketches. And like, it kind of is going to prime your brain to kind of get in the habit. And that's the most important thing I think about art is like establishing a habit. So yeah, and I that's what the class that. is called the sketchbook, the sketchbook habit. So. I think this is amazing. It's super practical. Everyone has a minute to spare, even on your lunch break. I think that's a great way to release some of that. And we will definitely have you on again because this was awesome. Cool. Um, everyone, make sure you're already following JD. Like I said before, no pressure, but his work is incredible. Follow me, please. <laughs> <laughs>
um and he has work in our shop as well um so get your hands on that and again thank you so much i learned so much and i actually really enjoyed myself great thank well, you thanks <laughs> have guys a have a good night Bye. Bye.